Welcome, dear friends, to Kardec Radio. This is Lifting Hope with our conversations on the book Memoirs of a Suicide by the spirit author Camilo Botelho through the medium Yvonne Pereira. This book comes to us to really lift our hopes up. Especially this chapter today, we're going to see that there's always another opportunity. There's always a new beginning. There are always people willing to give us a hand. We're never alone. Never, ever, ever. And all we need to do is to keep aiming high. High, high, high. Hello, Liz. Buenas noches. Como estas? It's so good to have you here joining us at Kardec Radio. Welcome. Today, as we're studying this new chapter, we're concluding part two of this book. And it's so beautiful because we're going to travel with Camilo to a very special night. A night in which Brother Teocrito, the director, talks to hundreds of suicide spirits who were in rehabilitation and announces a new phase in their lives. Are you ready for this? Yes? For those who haven't been with us before, remember, people commit suicide. Is it a bad thing? Yes, it's terrible. In this book, we learn that suicide is a crime. Before what? Before the gods of love, of God, which are the laws of love, of course. Does that mean that they will be Punished? No. But the action, the infraction, naturally pushes them to the consequences of it all, which is suffering. It is hard. So anything we can do on earth to prevent suicide is going to be a partnership with God. Think about this. Whatever you, all of us, can do, to prevent suicide. And you know that life is still not as loving as it needs to be on earth. We need to be more embracing, more caring, more with people so they feel they don't need to quit this life. I'm not talking about spoiling people, no. We're talking about letting them know that we're here. Have you been reaffirming yourself with your presence and your caring attitude before people's lives. Have you? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, lately, I've been thinking about this. There are people who at the end of his, their lives have issues, terminal illnesses, and the loved ones have no love or patience. And they decide to commit suicide because they don't want people to be bothered by it. You know what it is? Lack of love. Lack of love. We need to be more loving because I've seen people who are undergoing extreme conditions. And in spite of the labor intensive phase in their lives, the lives of the loved ones, they stay put because they know they're loved. So expressing love becomes a social skill. And we need to acquire. It's not a given. It's something we need to improve. I know many people talk about the five languages of love by Gary Chapman and other things. I respect that. I agree. People have different ways of expressing love. But that's not something we need to be content with. Expression of love, it's, it's always something to be pushed to another level. We shouldn't be content with our way of expressing love. There's always a new way of expressing how much we love and how much we care for the people whom we encounter in our lives. Hmm? 
What do you think? Where do you think you are in that regard? Hmm? It, there is never a limit to the expression of love. And what we're going to see today in this chapter, chapter 15th, part 2 of the book Memoirs of a Suicide, it's the expression of God's love and the messengers of God, their love in our lives. Are you ready? Hello, Jailton. I can see you. And I'm here connecting to see more of you before we actually begin. Hello, friends. I see Adilson. How have you been, Adilson? Ellen Swift. A big hug to you, Ellen. Carol Correa. Super hug to you, Carol. And... So, Souza, super hug to you too, So, And Daisy Gallen, big hug to you, Daisy. <clears throat> I see here Sunshine. By the way, Sunshine and Kara Correa have brought to us chapter 19 of the book, And Life Goes On by Andrea Lewis. Every Saturday, they're completing the study of this phenomenal book. And you can watch On Demand or you can watch it live on Saturdays at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Good job, friends. It's just so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So, I can see more people are coming in. And if I haven't said hi to you, you can always say hi to us. And we are here with you. This chapter is all about hope because it says new pathways. Right? You think God is the supreme intelligence and God is boring? No, because nowadays people say, oh, boring, boring, boring. But you think God is boring? God is not boring. God is the innovator of life. He's always proposing new pathways. And this chapter is so phenomenal because it shows to us that at some point, the innovator of the universe is going to say, ta-da, choose the new. Are you ready to choose the new? Yes. So let us travel there with Camilo and his group to find out what these new pathways are all about. Hello, Gabriel Inácio. Hello, John da Rosa. A big hug to you, friends. Okay. Ready? Yes. New pathways. I'm reading on my Kindle version. You can do it too. New pathways. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Jesus Christ. Ooh la la. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Two months have passed since they came back from the earth. So you remember... We were there with Camilo, Mário Sobral, João de Azevedo, Bela Hermino, and others, 35 of them, on the earth, learning to spread illumination, good news, encouragement to people who were feeling suicidal. Okay? I want to make a parenthesis here. Because when you think of the two forces of life, force, the impulse of life and the impulse of death, Freud talked about it. It's in our psyche. Spiritism explains as the law of preservation and the law of destruction. Both, they are complementary. But one thing we cannot play with is our lives. Yes, there is a need to transform ourselves. We look at ourselves in the mirror and the transformation that we want to go through. But we don't want to escape from the lessons of life. That's what we call suicide. So you can see that on earth, if you realize it, majority of people have some features that are somewhat suicidal because we're still learning to deal with life in its preservation mode, right? At human level, 
we're still stumbling in that regard. So the more we get to know about how to preserve life as is, the less we will allow those features to take over, okay? So here we have our dear Camilo saying that they returned to the hospital, Mary of Nazareth, and they wanted to talk to Brother Theocrito. They were concerned about his opinion about their internship on earth, and they wanted to know about where they would go next. Hmm. He says, on one of those days of anxious ex expectation, we were surprised by a visit from our old friend Geronimo. He arrived and he said he had come to meet with us in order to reciprocate our visits to him and also to say goodbye. Since that very week, he would be entering seclusion in order to prepare for his upcoming reincarnation. His features were marked by anguish and an unmistakable despondency. He was really, he says here, the most unbalanced of our unbalanced group, Geronimo. He was very sorrowful. He agreed to reincarnate and he said, my sins are grave, my debts are extensive, both weight heavily on my restless experience. He says, yes, my friends, praise the Lord, I'm going to be reborn in Oporto, Portugal. I'm going to re-enter human existence in, a, in an affluent family. Once more, I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to manage my own and other people's finances. I'm going to confront the temptations arising from pride, vanity, and selfishness for a second time. I'm going to win people's respect and be looked at as an honorable and honest man. I'm going to be just as it was in the past. The only difference is that they are not going to know me by my dishonored name, Geronimo de Arujo Silveira, but by another that will hide me from the shame that follow my steps. But you know, he will not have a family. He will not be married, not have a family. In fact, in fact, he will be in charge of helping children in an orphanage because he didn't value the family life that he had when he quitted it in the previous one. So in this one, he's not going to have a family. He's not going to have children. But he will look after children who are orphans because he saw the suffering of his own children after he quitted life. And I'm pausing here to meditate on this because majority of people on earth, they dream of having a family, having children, but that's not going to be the case for everybody. It's not a gift in the sense of life, like you deserve to have a family. When you form a family, it's for educational purposes too. Not having a family for educational purposes having a family for educational purposes. It's not a given. We need to conquer. We need to conquer our own feelings regarding having family, not having family. So we need to assess this deep inside of me because sometimes we have families, but we, we are spoiled or we spoil our families or we feel like we possess our family members as if they owe something to us, instead of feeling like Chico Xavier. Chico Xavier treated his family as people whom he needed to serve, not to be served. I remember reading the story of a nephew he had, and the mother was mentally ill, so he had to take care of his nephew for quite a while. And his nephew was so deformed and impaired, disabled, he couldn't bring him places. 
For several years, Chico Xavier couldn't go anywhere during the weekend because he was the one in charge for his nephew. Many people don't know about this and don't talk about it, but it is true. For many years, he had to stay home to take care of his nephew. And one day, he got to know who he was. He was somebody who lived in French, in France, the nephew. And he killed many people. Now he came in those conditions to expiate. And Chico Xavier helped him out. So the beauty of it all is that when this nephew discarnates, he comes back one day in a beautiful form, very renovated in the spiritual realm to be grateful to Chico Xavier and preparing himself for another opportunity. So you see here, we're talking about somebody like Chico whom didn't form his own family, but he took care of the family in general. Many people are very selfish. If they don't have their family, they will be upset. We're not going to judge, but this book makes us think about this. And we cannot impose ourselves. So Chico Xavier was able to take care of this nephew without impositions, without demands, without any expectation. This is an exercise for us. Okay, so here we have our dear friend Geronimo telling us that he himself will go through the journey of our new reincarnation and he will have to pass the test of being wealthy, pass the test of vanity, etc. Okay. Then Brother Ambrosio was there, and he came along and said that sometimes people who are candidates to reincarnating in that hospital, um, they will get to know the whole story about it, how they are going to reincarnate, or sometimes some of the feature, features, not the whole story, depends on their level of maturity to embrace the new. Okay. Okay. So here we have, <clears throat> I'll read his very words. It's beautiful. Because they asked, Jeronimo, what happened to your family? Do you know about Margarita, your daughter, who moved to Brazil? Brazil, and he says, yes, I know, brother, uh, the, 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 the instructor of his, no matter the name, allowed him to see in a screen what happened to his children. So he says, the rehabilitated Margarita and Albino, they were completely transformed. So we have Margarita, he got, she got married in Brazil to a good person, his son Albino moved to Africa and got married and had two daughters. How beautiful is this, right? So, Brother Ambrosio then at certain point in the conversation of theirs had some information for us regarding life and the trials of life. May heaven enable your will and mind not to wander off the rehabilitating pathway that you have decided to tread. At the moment, our penitent is animated by the best of intentions. However, being victorious in what he hopes to do will depend on his willpower, so mark it down, willpower, and on holding firm to his plan. Once reincarnated, the spirit usually lets itself slip into the fallacious attractions of its environments. 
it forgets the praiseworthy promises it made in the spiritual world, promises that would be in the best interest of the spirit to fulfill due to their importance. But if the spirit's will to triumph is strong enough to drive it forward, overcoming the deleterious influences of selfishness, it is sure to establish a harmonious telepathic connection with its invisible mentors, who will also strive to drive it forward with wholesome, albeit discreet, inspirations, assisting the spirit according to the law of solidarity, established to spread fraternity throughout the universe. Okay? Now, he said the secret here for us. Strong will, good will, okay? And if we make an effort, we maintain connection with the ones who guide us. Have we forgot about it? Sometimes we are here and we are suffering and we forget that we're not alone. That God knows exactly what's going on with us. He sent people to help us. We relax. How do you feel when you know of it? We relax. We're no longer like feeling like lost. I remember when we used to work in scientific labs. Sometimes you have to do research. My research was more behavioral. So observing the behaviors. So I remember sometimes we had to change the cages of the little animals. It was so loving and caring for me to experience that. And I remember moving them from one cage to the next. And you hold them. And when they are up in the air, they feel desperate because they are not seeing what's going to happen. You're just moving them from a dirty cage to a clean one. But in between, just this small, narrow moment, they go desperate. They're like, ah, as if like they're shaking their, what's happening to me? Because they're not seeing it. And as soon as you put them in a new cage, they relax. They are ready. Sniffing around and seeing everything's fine, everything's clean. They have more water, more food. And this is us. When I saw them, I often saw myself. And us in our lives, sometimes God is moving us to a better, a better thing. But in the transition, we're like kicking, screaming, and desperate and doubtful. But you know, at some point, we evolve, we gain new vision, and we understand what's going on. God is transitioning us to a new, better phase. That's it. We relax. We can't understand everything, but we trust in God, right? We trust in God. We trust in God. Thank God also for putting the very piece here that is so important. Both Brother Ambrosio saying to us how important it is for us to overcome our deleterious influences of selfishness to establish harmonious communications with the spiritual realm. In previous chapters, we were studying about mediumship on earth. When Camilo searched mediums who would understand them, etc. And many people didn't believe in them. Even the mediums themselves or the people in the mediumistic meeting didn't believe the mediums. It's so common that people doubt. So that's why many times you're going to receive phenomenal messages with no names or pseudonyms and you, you barely know who they are because people cannot handle it sometimes, right? Thank God, our dear Von Pereira, she believed her sincere efforts in spite of people's 
not complete understanding of what she was working upon, but she was patient, she was kind, she was truly fraternal and loving. And this is a, the quest of all mediums, especially the spiritists, the spiritists who work in mediumship. We need to be truly fraternal to maintain these harmonic connections, harmonious connections with the good spirits. That's exactly what's saying here, okay? So, Jerónimo has the main ingredient for fulfilling his promises, goodwill and tenderness towards abandoned orphans. Okay. All right. One second, I'm just flipping the pages, just like that. Flip, flip, flip. Yes, flip, flip, flip. Yes, two days later, Dr. Roberto de Canalejas visited them again. He brought an invitation so they could come attend a celebration with Brother Teocrito. Former patients were coming along and they were led into a vast auditorium and people sat in different places but the differentiation of the seats was not done by social class but by moral and vibrational status okay those who were sitting sitting side by side had the same level of scale of, of responsibilities merits and the merits we'll have that one day on earth for now we're all mixed up and we're still being separated by the material things it's okay it's a lesson for us to be learned it's not a big deal right so they describe the whole scenario they see the people who are coming in the same ceremony took place in majestic simplicity let us observe this expression majestic simplicity there were no idiosyncrasies or novelties, none of the outrageous sensationalism of earthly ceremonies. Some they made the men and women responsible for addressing the grave problems that trouble humankind learn from the spirits, the simplicity we had the opportunity to witness when they get together for celebrations or deliberations. Okay, food for thought. Like spirit centers, we have to be simple yet orderly. For spiritist meetings, simple but disciplined. We didn't don't need pompous activities like many people are doing. It doesn't match. It doesn't match. We need to keep things simpler. And this was written at the beginning, the first half of the 20th century, when things were much simpler. Imagine nowadays. So you see how far we have come from the original plan? We need to get back to it. Simplifying things. You know, sometimes I'll give an example. We go to spiritist meetings, spiritist centers, and we're so concerned about 10,000 details that we forget about the most important thing, the heart. We're there to be in communion with the higher spirits, no matter which type of spirit is meeting, and amongst ourselves. In order, in simplicity, and true intentions. Sometimes even cultivating a form of silence. Because silence is very precious. Jesus was not a chatterbox. box. He knew how to balance silence. And he knew that talking too much wouldn't take us anywhere. So he knew when he would speak. And how he would speak. To make sure that was just the essential. 
taking turns, giving people time also to say things, like Chico Xavier. You would go to a meeting of his, and people would have their turns as well. No matter the format we have, we need to cultivate as well silence and allow the public to cultivate some form of silence. If we go to a spiritist meeting and all we do is like from beginning to end, there's no moment for us to just be and do the introspection. It's not going to help us really do the inner journey. We need to give people moments to allow the good spirits to work with them. Right? You see in this that Brother Teocrito uses that technique too. He begins. Teocrito stood up, his fine and almost translucent features radiating a kind smile towards his words as he greeted them fraternally. Then he began his speech by instilling a new desire for life in our souls and renewal for the struggles of the future. We greet you, dear pupils, dear brethren in Jesus Christ. It is in his sublime name that we wish you the glorious victory of peace. The director's voice, or rather the vibrations of his benevolent thoughts towards us, which we understood as if they were his voice, reached our minds gently, almost confidently. Even so, the audience heard him clearly, not a single word being lost. I want to make a pause here, because this is about emotional body language, awareness of our emotional body language. There is a moment in life that we need to learn how to Customize the right tone of voice, the gestures we are using, and the facial expression to match what we're saying. Everything becomes very therapeutic. For people who are coordinating meetings that are very therapeutic, like in spiritist centers, we need to observe if the whole complex is emanating a match with the message. If I come here with my hair is all crazy like this and talk to you, does this match serenity? I'm sorry, I have to give an example. It's a little crazy, right? You look at this, I'm saying, let's be serene. And you're saying, Vanessa, please comb your hair. Yeah, I heard you guys. You see, I comb my hair. Now let's talk about serenity. It's it's more matching, right? Serenity. Hmm? Think about it. How important it is. It's not about appearance, but about matching. If I come here talking about simplicity, and I have a big diamond in my hands and all the jewelry, you're going to look at me and say, Vanessa, that doesn't look simple. I talk, right? So we need to practice. I'm not going to say we're going to ace all the time, but at least we're going to work on it. If I'm going to coordinate a meeting, I need to match the outside and the inside. Sometimes we can't because life is so challenging on earth. But we need to at least try it. Right? Brother Teocrito, he could modulate his tone of voice and we should practice it modulating it what are we emanating with the tone of our voice does that match the message we are sharing in our case far from brother Teocrito, we are not knowledgeable we're just sharing and yet we need to facilitate the messages delivery with a couple features that pertain 
to this expression. And that's what we said at the beginning, the expression of love. Brother Theocrito is being very loving in addressing the audience, audience of criminals, audience of suicide spirits, and yet they are being treated with love. And you can see it from his tone of voice, his kind smile, the facial expression. We need to do that training also when we go give talks, coordinate meetings, to modulate our demeanor, facilitating the delivery of the message. Okay? You saw with the crazy hair how things become very complicated. It's just a funny example, but we need to learn how to match it, exercising it. Hmm? Okay, so Brother Teocto is there, and he continued. A sincere enchantment infused the whole assembly with compassionate emotions. Teocrito continued, you all know the purpose of this meeting. It is your future that is being delineated here, the destiny that awaits you. It will be structured into a plan that you will not only be informed, but draw up and approve. Ever since the day when by orders from the higher realms, the gates of this correctional colony were opened and receive housing you, you have been living according to the rules of a hospital prison. It has been like that for your own good, so that your misery would not become worse, so that your responsibilities would not end up being more onerous because of the harmful consequences. That would have fatally absorbed you completely over centuries of grave transgressions. Were it not for the charitable intervention of the Immaculate Shepherd who went to look for you, anxious to bring you back to the fold. However, I'm here this evening to inform you that from this moment on, the same gates that closed behind you, imprisoning you under the imperative of strict protection and vigilance are now wide open. You are free from the hospital sector's wardship, my brothers. Everything this hospital and prison could do to assist you during the critical emergency in which you were entangled has been done. This is because you are creatures that have sprung from the eternal fluid of the divine mind. In you resides the life eternal of the one who granted you the glory of having been created in his image, which means that you shall be as he is, you shall live throughout all eternity. Be mindful that possessing eternal life, a glorious purpose demands your presence in the bosom of the eternal homeland, where the sovereign Lord of the universe expresses the magnitude of his glory. So why rebel against your divine origin? May the bitter lesson of experience serve you well. My dear friends, may the tears shed by your souls inconsolable in the presence of the reality you have been faced with remain in the folds of your consciences as a salutary warning for the future. When for your rehabilitation, you go through the same experiences you failed at the last time. Do you want to return to the earth immediately in a new physical body? as the only therapy that will lead you to the final cure of the complexes that have kept you submerged in the irremediable mire of anguish? You are free to choose this task because you have been well prepared for it. Or would you rather stay and work with us for some time, postponing for a while your inevitable return to the earth? learning to serve in you our contingent of guards, developing your faculties of love in a fraternal learning experience involving instruction for the obsessor phalanxes 
that infest the earth and the lower invisible, or helping out in our hospitals as healthcare givers, that is, lending your benevolent assistance in charity, fraternity, consolation, watch care, etc. You are authorized to choose. You are authorized to choose. Can you believe it? And he talks about one of the assistants, Joel. He says, observe Joel, whom you are so fond of. He arrived here in the same condition as you. The love of Jesus, however, made him into a peaceable being. And in spite of what he will yet have to go through on the earth because of his unfortunate act in the middle of the journey that he should have completed victoriously, how much love he extends to his suffering brothers, how many noble and meritorious gestures he distributes daily to those who are entrusted to you. Wow. He says you can stay here or you can reincarnate or even stay loose in the spiritual realm or even go to the streets of earth and mess up with your lives. He says, it's up to you. You're welcome to stay here if you'd like. Learn from the masters of the masters. Many of you presented this assembly are ready for such preparatory programs. Others are not. Your consciences will whisper the pathway to follow without our having to reveal your names. And even those of you who are ready, nobody's forcing you to accept the invitation. You may accept it if you'd like, according to your free will. And people were talking to each other. Camilo says, we admired the charitable subtlety of his method. It kept us from feeling in any way favored. It also abolished completely the supposition of any favoritism. Theocrito then continued. You will have 30 days to ponder what you have just heard. While you have been instructed and enlightened for some time now to choose for yourselves what is most appropriate. Forbearance dictates that we give you more time to consider your future. During that time, you'll be assisted daily by sector headquarters in case you need more information, clarification regarding your particular situation. You'll be able to open up freely to those who will be at your disposal for this task because they will speak in the name of the Divine Shepherd. Isn't this beautiful? It's phenomenal. The invitation, thank Adilson for helping us um, copying and pasting this bit, or this bit of information here that Theocrito is sharing with everyone. This simple and yet significant speech was followed by the first exposition of our duties as repentant spirits eager for rehabilitation. It was the first of a series of lectures that we have been invited to attend, and Theocrito himself was the speaker once more. He spoke in a paternal, counseling tone of voice without passionate outbursts of oratory. Ah, ha, ha, we want to talk about it. Sorry, we want to talk about it. Because you see how in all of these books, including the book Good News by Humberto de Campos and Andre Lewis through Chico Xavier, We've never seen the spirits who are superior to us talking in this outburst of oratory. So where does that come from, right? Not from the superior realms. See? Mark it down. Let's think about it. We need to have eyes to see and discernment to ponder what we are exposed to. The tone matters, being compassionate, paternal, counseling without a passion. And many people feel is not necessary, and really, it is not. 
it is not. He merely conveyed thoughts that penetrated the innermost folds of our soul regarding the weak points of each one of us. As a veritable expert on our individual complexes, his objective was to help us identify, measure, and scrutinize them so that we could strive against them. We left the hall on that memorable night very comforted, strengthened by a benevolent hope. That's why this book is all about hope. Hope, 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 hope. Almost like Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Which means hope, 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 hope. Just kidding. At the end of the 30-day period, there was a lot of activity happening in the hospital, in the tower. Groups of patients and their mentors walked the snowy lanes of the parks in the direction of sector headquarters in order to deliver to the highest authority their final decision, made after serious deliberation and analysis of their individual situation with the help of their dedicated counselors and instructors and supervised by Teocrito himself. So he saw spirits like Agenor Penalva, who was a suicidal spirit, like walking their path to the decision of reincarnation, like Jerônimo da Silveira, Mario Sobral. They all desired immediate reincarnation because of their remorse and the anguishing pers perspectives of a past that tormented their minds. Now think about this. If this person reincarnates, with that anguish, you think they're gonna be super duper happy, babies, children, no. So that's why when people are here, we need to give them a hand to recover, to rehabilitate, continue re rehabilitating themselves, okay? And gaining the joy of living. That's why the affirmations we're gonna give to ourselves tonight as an opportunity for a new pathway for everybody. I am love, I am peace, I am joy of living. You can say you're light. I am light, I am peace, I am joy of living. Whenever you come across anguishes, whenever you doubt your abilities, repeat to yourself, I am light, I am peace, I am joy of living, because God loves you, and you're important. We can't let you down. Up, up, let's stand up, walk tall, certain of God's love, and let us teach our children. Let them go to sleep by remembering, I am a child of God. I love and approve of myself in ways that are pleasing to God. We need to please God by loving ourselves. And we can't, we need to stop these guilty, guilty trips that we have. And when you go to spirit centers, keep your guilt for yourself. Please do not use study sessions. I see this all so often in many study sessions in spirit centers around the world. It's so common. People start sharing their stories, their guilt. Don't, don't. Keep it to yourself because that's very sad. If you need a counselor, talk to a counselor. But the people who come there, they have their own stories and we cannot abuse that collective time with our personal issues. That's charity. Zip it up, zip it up. And we can't inflict more guilt on people by making them feel like, oh, if this person is feeling this, I should feel this way as well. Let's keep it to ourselves, okay? This is very, very important. Very, very, very important. Adilson here is saying, when Chico gave his TV interview on the show Pinga Fogo, the humility on the tone of his voice and his kindness and respect for the journalist 
have so much to teach all of us how to spread the good news vibrating in every fiber of our body's love and compassion. Thank you, Adilson, for this beautiful highlight. It's so true. Chico Xavier is the model of spiritist for us. If there is one spiritist we can we can emulate without mistake is Chico Xavier. And you're right. His tone of voice Emma needed so much humility. We need to learn with him, right? I mean, we can learn. It's up to us. If we do, good for us, right? Thank you, Adiosa. This is simply phenomenal comment. So, these spirits felt the urgency to expiate their wrongdoings. So when you see somebody going through a tough time, don't feel sorry for them. Feel the blessing of God on them because they are strong enough to go through that. Don't pity them. Jesus never taught us to pity anyone. He said, help, bring relief. But remember, blessed are the afflicted. That doesn't mean we're going to let them suffer. No, because when we are going through, we want people to help us. But we're not going to feel like, oh, oh, poor this, poor that. Say, no, 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 poor nobody. Blessed are the afflicted. They're blessed. They're blessed. They're blessed. They're blessed. And we can bring them relief to the blessing of their own experience, okay? That's a mindset we need to conquer. And then, of course, Camilo says that on their side, Bellarmino, João Azevedo, and Camilo, and a few others, attuned to us, all from the Mayor of Nazareth Hospital, were thrilled by the magnificent lectures of the venerable sector director. So after extensive examination, careful self-examination, we presented ourselves to him, declaring that if we were deserving of his honorable mercy, then in spite of the unworthiness we will still bore in our consciousness, we would like to continue on the preparatory pathway towards initiation because we were attracted to the perspective of the knowledge that he had given us as a glimpse. And what did Brother Theocritus says? Welcome, my friends. Starting tomorrow, you will be on your new pathway. Yes, yes, yes. So as we were certain that we would be leaving the hospital sector the very next day, and that we would be without the benevolent friends that had consoled us so much in our misfortune, we were overcome with profound sorrow. However, we all had on known that the stay in the hospital was temporary and usually very short. We started saying goodbyes at the hospitals, embracing everyone with a smile. And then, of course, Joel said, don't you think you'll be separated from us for good? We'll see each other many times. Patience, my dear friends. Patience. Doctors Carlos and Roberto guided them and they were introduced to the next steps. Interesting enough, <clears throat> he observed the Geronimo, many other spirits, Mario Sobral, in the lines for the admission to the pathways of reincarnation. And he observed that it wasn't easy for them. But then Sister Celestina reveals something quite interesting, saying that, for example, Mario Sobral was so strong in his conviction to go through a painful reincarnation that she said, I know he will succeed because he is truly convinced about the need to go through it. So how many spirits we look at and are undergoing extreme expiations? And we should help them. 
by emanating the certainty that they are so blessed in their expiation because that's a an educational corrective pathway for them if we emanate that conviction of God's blessing in their lives like Jesus used to do will be helping them beating them is not a choice in Camilo's case they take the transportation and are going to the university oh my gosh hallelujah the university sector how beautiful is this so starting next program tomorrow we will enter a new pathway the university sector connected to the colony mary of nazareth in the spiritual realm where we're gonna learn many things that probably we have never known and as camilo says at the end of this chapter praise god so it was true indeed we had progressed isn't this hope how are you feeling my friends because you and i are also progressing right raza right friends so now we invite you to join us in a final prayer because this is our service together our collective prayer to wish the good and loving spirits our best intentions to join them in favoring the suicidal spirits in the valley of suicides and the suicidal minds that are here on earth as well shall we let's play the ave maria let's play the ave maria and pray together don't go away because we need you we need you stay here with us because we need to pray Let us all now visualize Mother Mary, her compassionate smile, maternal embrace, visualizing her emanating new strength. Dear Mother Mary, we thank you for this wonderful book that illuminates our minds and brings us new hope. We now join forces with you, visualizing your sky blue blanket of healing light enveloping all of us in renewed strength, but especially our brothers and sisters who are right now in the valley of suicides, suffering to levels unimaginable. We pray that they feel the envelopment of your warm healing blanket and observe your guards rescuing them to a new moment to a new beginning and we pray that those who are incarnated on earth suffering and see no end to their suffering contemplating suicide may they be enveloped by your healing blanket of light and here you tell them with your love and compassion my dear child 
this shall pass. My dear child, this shall pass. My dear child, this shall pass. In the loving and kind servants of your legion, treating them with new hope, solutions to their issues and problems. And we pray especially for children and teenagers who are in that mindset so they may be enveloped by renewing love. We trust the love of God for all of us. We feel it and we pray that all of our loved ones, especially those who are in greater need than ourselves, feel your loving care, strengthening them to their deep healing. Thank you for your guidance, Mother Mary. Thank you for your protection and for your permission to exercise this moment with you, and so be it. La da 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 Right. This is Lifting Hope here at Kardec Radio, always nourishing our souls. Tomorrow when we come back, we'll be in the university sector. What a joy. For now, we wish you many blessings and a lot of joy of living. Thank you, friends. Until tomorrow. God willing.